All right, so I've got all of my layers, foreground, middle ground, background, placed. I can delete the layers I know I'm not going to use. And at this point, I have a lot of extra space I don't need. So I'm going to crop down, not right to my image border of my sketch, but just a little bit outside of it. And this is another a time when I can kind of reevaluate what the shape of my composition should be based on my reference. So I can use my move tool and I can move the guides and decide, well, I want a little bit more of this ground layer. I like getting the bottom of that stone. I like the little, little um, plant life at the base here. That leads in well. And then maybe I want to push this edge a little over as well. But notice that if I keep pushing it, I'm going to start losing content. So you see I have nothing there. So I need to move that up, pinch this in, so that when I crop it, I still have true edges. Now, what if I decide, well, no, I don't, I don't want to miss out on all that. That's where you go back to your source material. And I can bring that in again. This is why if you have enough memory, it's nice not to have to delete your, your smart edges or your smart layers. Then I can flip it. Gosh, I kind of like that Joshua tree. Hmm. So I want the headaches of having to cut that out. Well, we will see. Okay, so I'm going to make a duplicate of that because I'm not sure. And then I'm going to take this layer that gives me what's underneath that rock. I'm going to bring it up above. Take its opacity down and then grow it. So control T. There it is. And I just need some ground underneath that rock. So it's just for a tiny corner, but I hold down shift and I make it match. Now it looks like I'm growing references, which I told you not to do. But the whole thing is this reference was really large when I brought it in when I had the extra canvas space. Remember, whenever you bring something in, it will, it will um, size itself as a smart object just to fit with your canvas space. So I know that this image has the resolution. That's another reason why you give yourself excess space at the beginning. So you can get a sense of the true resolution of everything. Okay, there we go. So I've now lined that up. It's just giving me a preview image right now, which is why it looks so pixely. And then I can hit return. And this is just to patch that corner. So it's, it's not exactly lined up, but it's enough to just grab a portion of it for the corner and to duplicate that and to put it at full resolution. Oh, and if I'm going to do the corner, I might as well do this whole little black part here too. So I'm just going to steal all of that. 
that whole bottom edge. It's proved to be a more useful source than I thought. And heck, I might want to grab all of this for the bottom edge. Duplicate it. Erase it. Now I want to move it behind my other foreground layers. And just get rid of that blue. And there we are. So I have that patched. Now I have to decide, do I want to use this Joshua tree? My favorite U2 album in the composition or not? And it, it's cool. It makes it a little busy maybe. So I'm not sure yet. So I'm just gonna rough cut it out this is for all of you cutting out trees or cactuses or things with lots of little detail. Just rough cut it for now. Make sure you're sure about the placement before you do anything more. Duplicate it, turn off the layer behind. And you know, I like it, but my problem with it is it pushes everything too much into the foreground. It doesn't lead the eye into the middle ground like this does. So, not going to use it for now, but I'll keep it as a layer asset. Okay, now that I have that ground, I get to choose kind of how to use these elements. I might shift certain things, like these purple mountains. I might decide to unlock them and just stretch them a little bit narrower. Squeeze them down just a bit. And you can see if you like that better by just going back and forth with your history. And I do like that, but I like that that, that edge isn't cutting through the rock anymore. I like how that breaks the edge of the um, the pond or the water. Good. And then where do I want the actual bottom to be then? Well, might as well put it underneath this little sagebrush. Okay. So now... Good time to save. I've got everything placed, though there's still some details that can be cleaned up. But what I haven't done anything to is the color and the lighting. So this is the important part of this video. Before I do like final adjustments and definitely before I do dodging and burning, which I'll get to next class where we can uh, deepen shadows, brighten highlights. I want to work on the overall lighting and color of each layer. And I'm going to be mindful of my inspiration. I'm not a slave to it, but I'm going to be mindful to, of it. So I'm just going to open that up in preview and keep that up in the corner. Not even going to see it very well, but it's there. So this is kind of saturated in pink. So, starting with the, the mid-tones of the foreground, I'm going to see what I can do in terms of lighting and color. So I'm going to start from the foreground. And let me merge together the layers that are pertinent. So let's see. Just 
to try to simplify things, this layer and the one I I can hold down Command and select layers that aren't touching, and then go to Layer Merge those layers. This layer is just that little stone. I don't know if that's even needed. Hmm. I'll keep it turned off for now. So this whole foreground layer, I'm going to start with it. And these are what are called uh, direct adjustments. This is different than I would teach in photography because this will change the pixels within the layer in real time. So if you're squeamish about it, just make a duplicate. And then you're going to do direct adjustments to the duplicate. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments. And first, I'm going to play with Levels. Levels adjust with the histogram, the lights and darks. And you can see it's a nice balanced exposure. I'm going to go ahead and brighten my foreground histogram just by shifting the midtones, just this middle slider a little bit to the left. That's all. Then I'm going to go to my middle ground. Come on. There it is. I'm going to merge it together with its other component parts. So I'm going to lock this. It's done for now. Oh, and I can see if I like it or not. Remember, I made a duplicate. So that was darker. This is lighter. Now behind it, I want to merge that with all of its different parts. So layer merge. And now I can adjust the lighting of that. And if I'm squeamish, I'll make it a duplicate. Lock what's behind. And now go to image adjustments, levels, just lighting adjustments. And I want to try to push this maybe a little bit, little bit darker. I can go lighter, but you see how that kind of pushes it forward. I want it to recede back a little bit, but not so much that the shadows become lose pixel information by becoming black. OK, I can see the difference. I haven't done color yet, just lighting. Then behind that, I'm going to push it a little deeper, duplicate it, lock, image adjustments, levels. Let's push this darker by moving it, but I have too much of an edge on it. So here I'm going to actually darken it a little bit, but limit how dark it can get by limiting the, the dark window on the scale bar. I can also limit the highlights a little bit, and that will push it into the background. I can see if I like that better. Come on, or not. And I definitely do, because that deadens that highlight, and it lets it recede into the background a little bit more. Not using the Joshua tree right now. Now this one, this one I definitely want to play with the lighting of, and, and then even more so the color. But that will be the beginning of next class. So just playing with your levels, whether you make a duplicate of them or not, will help everything kind of sit together a little bit better. And then maybe I'll even enhance the highlights. Go right to the edge of the histogram. Then maybe limit the shadows.